E-Dragons can often be one of the hardest air spam armies to master, but in today's video, you'll see Nabrax of Tribe Gaming just go for the simple approach that is still dominating bases. Nabrax is one of the best 5v5 players in the world, but recently he's been lighting it up in Legends League with mass E-Drags, and the way he uses this army is so simple. He doesn't do anything crazy, just does all the fundamentals correct, and he's destroying bases. And I have to show you this video because some of us overthink the E-Drags. We've done a few E-Drags videos on the channel before with Nikita, who does some crazy hits, don't get me wrong, but the way he does it is extremely difficult to replicate. But the way Nabrax does it today, really easy to replicate, and you can definitely do it yourself. So hopefully after this video today, if you want to take this top air spam army in the game into Legends League or War, you're going to have all the tools. Because look at this. We just blimped the Town Hall, and we're going to E-drag straight through where we blimped. I got another replay of this, so don't worry. We will go through it in detail. But the biggest thing to note is the chains through the core of the base are crazy. The Town Hall was easy to blimp, and both sweepers are facing the back end of the base. We've got the Queen and the King on one side. We've got a Baby Drag on the other that has since died. And look at the chains these E-drags are getting. So nice. That Eagle's almost killed already. Uh, let's see if we can take it down here. No, it's still 1 HP. Come on. One shot. There we go. And the entire back end of the base is weakened, actually, because of these epic E drag trains through the base. Unfortunately, can't get that ground bow down. But that's all right, because the back end of the base, it's not up to our E drags, right? They're just going to get rid of the core of the base. Now it's up to our heroes. All four of them, in fact, are together here. Generally, you'll have three of them together and the warden in the core. And the heroes are just moving through the back end. Now, he brings a skeleton spell with this army specifically to assist the heroes. Doesn't really do a lot for the E-Drags, because obviously they are an air troop. But the skeleton spell is super handy versus any single infernos, monoliths, uh, and ground bows. Less useful versus the multi-inferno, and that's why you'll see he placed the skeleton spell all the way over here to keep it away from the multi that was sitting right here. And, uh, look, it's not like a complete overkill, but e drags don't often look like a complete overkill. Generally, it's just your heroes clean up the back end of the base. Uh, only one e drag up, and that is fine. Really nice start. I got another replay, though, with this crack, and we'll go in more detail about it. Here is another box space, and yet again, Town Hall right on the outside of the base, and, uh, Nabrax is gonna take advantage of that. Pulls the Sams. Now, unfortunately, there's also a NATO behind, so he's gonna have to freeze this Invis Tower twice. Uh, just not worth the risk, right? Doesn't use a Rage, though. He's able to save that, which is, uh, really well calculated. If not all the balloons went onto the Town Hall, I think you would have seen him use a Rage spell, though. But yeah. Now we're just sitting here waiting, because we're waiting for this poison effect to go away. We got the queen on the top side, the baby dragon, a few balloons on the bottom, and look at the E-Drags push through. Now, yet again, look at this. Two sweepers facing the back end. E-Drags hate sweepers. They are so slow to shoot, so if you can avoid facing sweepers, awesome. And then look at this. All these buildings through the, throughout the core are touching, so have a look at some of the chains we will get here in a second. Now, he wardens a bit earlier than you did in the last attack, and I assume that's because the eagle and the monolith were hitting there, but you can definitely try and save your warden ability to the core if you like, but generally with E-Drags, we talk about this all the time, generally with E-Drags, you'd much rather warden earlier than later because you can keep those balloons alive. Now, unfortunately, our warden died here, which is uh, <laughs> not a good thing at all, so these E-Drags are in a bit of trouble in the core. They're all going to go down in quick succession, but they've gutted the entire core of the base, right? We've got the queen on the top side. She hasn't lost too much health at this stage. She will take that ground bow down and should reroute. No, she's just going to beat a wall. Fair enough. we still got our king ability as well, and we are yet to deploy our RC. Don't even have max heroes on this account of his, and we'll just two times through the rest, because there is a full minute to go. But this is something you can definitely look for in your war attacks. Because uh, this is definitely effective. Uh, box spaces, particularly with these stacked cores, are extremely toxic to hit. And E-Drags are a good counter as long as you have a good plan. And uh, Nabrax definitely had a good plan here. King is hanging on to life. Now, you'll notice he brings the Frosty with the King. I'm going to make a recommendation, and you'll definitely see why in some of the future attacks. I'd go the Yak with the King. Sounds crazy, because the Yak isn't that good. But especially once you get that la Yak level 15... It will be OP. And right here is the style of base that you see E-Drags go best on. 
because ring bases are super compact. I really like this funnel, though. Just a couple of loons and one E-Drag, because we do need all these E-Dragons to go towards the core of the base. Here come in the loons. Here come in the E-Drags. Generally, you want to place E-Drags, then balloons, but that's just been really picky. And we're going to warden nice and early here. Double rage. The standard stuff you have with E-Drags. Double... So you go... You generally go E-Drags, balloons, warden, uh, blimp, double rage, warden ability. Now, look at this. So he will use the blimp in every attack. Rage the blimp, obviously, because those loons get shredded. But look at these chains. It's just so nice through the core of the base. This one should be epic. Oh, look at that. You'll love to see it. And we're just ripping this pace apart. Now, I kind of missed it, but the queen had to pop her ability on the bottom side. Because she was facing the enemy king. A little unfortunate our king couldn't uh, do that for us. But it's alright. And uh, thankfully, the heroes actually are, end up on the same side as the warden and the remaining E-drags. So, we're just going to move together across the core of the base. But yeah, definitely would have been better in this scenario to have the yak. Because look, can't really beat through that wall without the yak. The queen just had to beat the wall herself. But yeah, definitely couldn't recommend that enough. Yak with this army. Because... You don't really... There's no point in bringing a wall breaker. You'd much rather bring extra balloons with this army. Because you don't need the wall breaker most attacks. But when you do, the yak is the best way of doing it. In saying that, he might be upgrading his yak at the moment. Moment That may be why Nabrax doesn't have it. I don't know. But that was a really nice attack. Let's get another ring base for you. This right here is the most toxic ring base in the game. It is horrific to attack. But thankfully, E-Drags have a pretty okay go of it. So setting the funnel with the baby drag and the queen. Notice, by the way, he doesn't put the king down at the start. Because there's no point. All the king would do would beat a wall we don't want him to beat. So we're just going to use the queen here. And then you'll see he'll use like the king like in this sort of area. But yeah, I'll try and show it. But yeah, the frosty is just not the greatest on this style of base. Um, thankfully, if you're in war, you can pick what uh, pet you're running specific to the base. Yet again, we rage our balloons on the town hall. Gets in there quite nicely. And these E-Drags just got to put in work. Now, you'll notice this defensive CC is such a pain. Mass Archer C Cs are not good for E-Drags. This is why you bring the poison spell. By the way, his king placed on the wall over there. You can see how long it's going to take that king to get through. In fact, it takes so long that the queen will not go into the wall with the king because uh, she's busy taking out other buildings. But yeah, the e are just putting in work. They're going to gut the entire core of the base. Now, unfortunately, they won't take down the CC building. Now, thankfully, we've already dealt with all the archers from it. But when it comes to e you really do want to try and take out the CC building if possible. Because if there's a triple ice golem in there, then we're in trouble. Because our heroes will have to deal with it in the core of the base. But yeah, we haven't placed our RC yet. King ability goes off. Queen is on the outside of the base, but that's okay. We can place the RC straight through the middle, and this is wrecked. Really nice. But yeah, I hope you are seeing A, how important it is to get a really good warden ability and get everything in it. B, how strong the blimp is. And C, why you need to bring the yak with the king. Um, that's my only suggestion to Nabrax at this point. Uh, swag skeleton spell here. I mean, it was completely crushed. I had to show you the way that Nabrax takes down these diamond bases. I think it's really nice. So, a lot of the time when we had uh, Nikita on, he would do two E-Dragons and like a Rage or two to take down the Town Hall. But yet again, Nabrax just doing it simple. He's just going to take down the Town Hall with the blimp. But these two E-Drags behind are actually setting an elite funnel. Because look, there's no air targeting defenses in the area, right? Well, what can the base do? So, not only is he blimping to get the town all down, which is one of the most valuable buildings, but he's got a perfect funnel into the base to the point where this sweeper, it's not going to be that effective. It will be slightly effective, but not that effective. Pop the warden ability nice and early to keep the balloons alive, and we're just pushing through the base here. Now, these sort of diamonds are really awkward to hit because they are extremely compact. Like, diamonds normally quite spread out, but this diamond here has very compact damage. But because we're not fa facing a sweeper, because the e have a perfect path throughout the base, we're actually making this look kind of easy. The king and queen are doing huge work on the top side. Yet again, using them to funnel was super nice. Great freeze on the defensive queen there. I kind of missed it. That Or oh, defensive RC, sorry. Uh, but that was huge. Anything to make our hero's life easier on the back end. 
And there's just really not much left. We've got our three heroes together. We just popped the queen to deal with that enemy king. A little unfortunate. You don't want to pop the queen if you can help it. But definitely worth it in the end. Because there's no headhunters with this, right? So you need to keep that in mind. And this is just going to be the RC show from here. It's the sort of thing I know a lot of you will say, Oh, this looks really close, Hooked. Uh, you know, why are you showing this? This isn't close. I mean, this is quite clearly been a triple for a while. As soon as the Edrax get that much value, the heroes are automatic from there. But if you enjoyed this diamond, wait for the next one. Diamond base again, and I really want to talk about the way that Nikita goes on bases versus what we've seen from Nabrax so far in the video. However, Nabrax is going to do the Nikita crack here. Really nice, by the way. Perfect chains with the two E-drags to take down the air defense there without a rage. But yeah, Nabrax in this attack is not going to blimp the town hall. He is going to do the two E-drag crack. And now, why is that? Well, look at the town hall, right? It's on the outside of the base, and the only real anti-air targeting defense was this uh, air defense here, and we chained that immediately. But you're going to see that uh, this approach isn't necessarily necessary. Like, it's not something you have to do. You don't, you're not forced to do that slightly risky crack two, three star bases. So look, we come in with the E-drag push on the top side, using the skeleton spell to tank not only the monolith, but actually the scatter as well. Super handy. Queens on the top side. Should see the warden ability any second with the double rage. Perfectly done. Yet again, not fighting any sweepers by coming in this way. But we've got the slammer and we're just sitting on it because he wants to use the slammer on the back end of the base to help out his heroes and so forth. Is he going to freeze that defensive queen? No. I thought he might freeze the queen. Oh, he's got no more freezes. That's probably a good reason why he didn't uh, elect to go with the freeze. But yeah, this attack looks like it's died out quickly. But keep in mind, we have not used the stone slammer. And also keep in mind the entire core of the base is gone. By the way, he does bring the phoenix with the warden. Um, I feel like I have to explain why. You don't want to bring the owl at all because it will shoot at buildings and do damage and you want the E-Drags to chain as much as possible. In fact, if an E-Drag player had their way, they wouldn't want the Warden to do any damage like him shooting buildings an entire attack because he takes out buildings that your E-Drag can chain. So you definitely do not want to bring the... Uh, don't want to bring the owl. The Phoenix is best. Look at this. We're going to swag our Siege Machine, and that's my whole point. Uh, you saw in the last base on the Diamond and on quite a few of the boxes, you just blimp the Town Hall with like an E-Drag or two behind it to set a funnel. And a lot of you might be thinking, well, that's not enough value. But, I mean, in this attack, he could have done it, and it would have been fine. He ended up swagging it anyway, and so that's why I wanted to show you this, to be like, you don't have to do those E-Drags for the Town Hall that are quite risky, because if your E-Drags don't go for the Town Hall, you've just swagged a few spells and a lot of your E-Drags. Nabrax just generally going for the safe option. This time doesn't, and uh, didn't even need it anyway. So really nice attacks from uh, Nabrax in this video. If you want to see more E-Drags, I will link Nikita up. I was going to point above us, but it's going to be to the left. Uh, Nikita being the best E-Drag player on the planet. Could not recommend it enough, but I tell you what, Nabrax is pretty solid with this army. But, I mean, to be fair, he's great with every army.